Master Z Ip Man Legacy is a spin off and sequel to the Ip Man films, following Chiang Ting Chi, the antagonist of Ip Man 3, after his humbling defeat at the hands of Ip Man. Depressed and dejected, he leaves teaching Kung Fu and becomes a hired thug to bring home cash for himself and his young son. He has a chance confrontation with goons from the local mafia after helping a female junkie escape their beatings, and he himself becomes a target in the process. With his home being burnt down and an assassin being sent to kill him, played by Tony Jaa in a guest appearance, the junkie sister asks her bar-owning brother to take in Chang and his son and offer the father work in the bar. Meanwhile, one of the top mafia bosses, played by Michelle Yao, is trying to go legit. A difficult task, seeing as though her brother continues to sell drugs in the same club that Chang now works in. Powers collide and so do fists and kicks in Kung Fu action. Usually I don't bother with films like this. Since the success of Ip Man, there's been so many knockoffs and cash-ins, including the series itself which will have its fourth entry soon, and a lot of them look cheap and shitty. There are usually good clues, like how a lot of them hire has-beens like Steven Seagal or boxers or wrestlers like Mike Tyson. This film does the same having Batista in a prominent role as the highest ranking criminal figure, a final boss of sorts, moonlighting as a charitable restaurant owner, who Chang learns is the key after following the money and the drugs. The main reason I wanted to watch it is because it's directed by Wu Ping Young, who, yes, hasn't made anything decent in a long while, but I always enjoyed his earlier films like Drunken Master, Snake in Eagle's Shadow and Dance of the Drunk Mantis. He's also the fight choreographer in so many movies. In fact, the list of movies he's worked on is insane, including, and get this, The Matrix, Kill Bill, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Fearless, Kung Fu Hustle, Fist of Legend, Iron Monkey, Unleashed, Once Upon a Time in China, The Forbidden Kingdom, and Ip Man 3. So you're at least guaranteed decent fight scenes, even if the film isn't good. Saying that though, reservations I had against the film were all cleared when I watched it, because Master Ip is a very good martial arts movie. There's a lot going on in the film. In fact, you could argue it tries to pack in too much for a film less than two hours long. There's an interesting set of characters, and seeing them collide makes for interesting viewing, but you just want them to be a bit more fleshed out. Michelle Yao, for example. Why is she trying to go legit after all this time? Why now? How does she deal with her being rejected by high society, who see her only as a criminal? But it's to the film's credit the characters aren't boring cutouts like you often get in a lot of martial arts films, so there's that. As well as the plot, which involves Chang trying to stop the drug flow through the bar, the gangsters who commit the crimes, and the corrupt police who enable it, there is an undercurrent journey Chang goes through, of course, after his defeat by Ip Man in the last film. It isn't fleshed out too much, but it does involve him pondering on whether he is a good person or not, and he does open up and use some of Ip Man's moves to defeat his enemies. And the journey's climax arrives at the amusing line, I'm not here to be a hero, I'm here to kick your ass, in the final fight. The fight scenes themselves are great. Unlike a lot of modern films in the genre, there aren't too many of them packed in one film, which makes them stick out more in memory a lot better. There are some dynamite moves in the martial arts sequences, the punches and kicks look real, and you feel the impact of them landing, in part due to the excellent sound design of the film capturing the crunches and cracks of limbs connecting. The excellence of the fight scenes is elevated by Wu Ping Yung's confident command of the camera, as it swivels and turns to highlight the devastation of impacts. In one particularly great scene, in which there are two one-on-ones in the same room, the camera joyfully weaves and glides around the room and always makes sure to showcase the actor's abilities. Michelle Yao was pretty impressive in the one fight scene she had, and I like what they did with Batista, making him like an unstoppable brute, a beast who can't be taken down. He did really well in his part, and the fight between him and Chang is the other most memorable fight of the film. I had a bad set of subtitles, they were out of sync so I had to keep readjusting them and I am suspicious about the translation into English and I think I missed out a lot of the nuance from the dialogue, but that's not on the film itself though, and it's a nice, colourful, well shot martial arts movie. I give it a 7 out of 10.